welcome back to Data Science for Everyone. Today we're going to be talking about markdown files. Particularly we're going to be talking about utilizing the YAML header. Now we use the YAML header, um, which stands for yet another markup language, in order to control the uh, whole document by uh, setting the settings such as uh, tweaking parameters inside of the YAML header. And this is designed to help represent more hierarchical data and so it's much more easy for us uh, to read and write. So Markdown utilizes this in ways to control details of the output. And so we're going to discuss uh, only one part today, and that is going to be the parameters. So parameters themselves uh, in, a mark, uh, in a Markdown file are going to, you can have one or more of these parameters, and it helps you render a report. So let's go on and start, and let's start a new notebook and I'm going to just do something like uh, your name and then I'm just gonna title this um, uh, test report and let's just do this in an HTML file Okay, and I'm going to go on and get rid of all of this pre-built stuff so that we can kind of uh, start from a clean slate here. So also let me save this as, uh, I'll just call this um, test report. So the YAML header starts out with three dashes above and three dashes below. Then inside we're going to have YAML. So in this instance, let's create, we want it to have a title and let's call it our test report. And then we'll also have another one that's called output. And this will be the output type. And so we want an HTML document. Um, and you can do this also as a PDF or as a Word document or whatever else your organization feels like it's comfortable with. Um, or your boss uh, wants it in the out, in that output format. Now, we, the next out, uh, thing we're going to work on is the params. So we need to declare params, and this is basically going to feed um, global variables to the rest of the document. Um, so let's start out. We will be using um, create a my class, and this will be um, SUV. So we're going to be using the. Um, the um, MPG data set today just so we can play with this so let's do a setup now let's name our chunk setup and we want to make sure that this is not included okay so that doesn't print out anything uh, so we want a library and I'm actually going to do just the tidyverse okay as we have been doing um, and then we also want to create a class variable, which will be our MPG. Whoops. Our MPG data, we want to filter that data with uh, whatever class, and we want that to set from our, uh, our parameters attribute, and that will be my class. So you can see here that we grabbed the params so which is actually up in here. So we're telling it to grab this whole parameter. Think about this as um, kind of like a small database or like a, a dictionary of some sort. We want to access the parameters attribute and then we want to go through and we want to grab that my class list. We're only doing this for a single class right now and in a second I'll show you how to uh, create this for a variety of uh, classes, okay? So this is the next portion here. And then let's go in and add um, something like uh, fuel economy for, and then here we're going to write some inline R code, R params my class. Uh, and we'll have apostrophe S here on the end. And so what this will do is this will take this SUV and it'll say um, fuel economy for SUVs. Okay, uh, and actually that we won't need a apostrophe there. 
Uh, and then let's add another line of code in here. Uh, and we want to have our messages to be false and we want our warnings to equal false. So what this is is that if there's any warnings or anything whenever we're going to be displaying some plot, we don't want them to be seen inside of our um, our file, okay? And we and well, we can I can maybe show you guys an example of this later on. So we want let's do a ggplot ggplot. Uh, we want class and our aesthetics. We want to do uh, displacement and highway. This is a, a, uh, what we've been doing in the other sections as well. So we'll do a geom point, and then we're also going to add a geom uh, smooth. And I'm going to turn the uh, standard errors off, so I want them to be false. Um, and you know what? Let's add in one more interesting thing that we can do here. Um, and so this is this is our fuel economy. And then let's also say that besides the name, so this this test report here will come up as a title up here as a uh, header one. But we also want to say this was updated on a specific day. So we can say, um, oh, you know what, and let's maybe, um, do we want to do this? Yeah, let's do this actually as an attribute. So, uh, so updated, and then we will have something like, uh, our uh, params and let's say we want date so let's add our date in here and then we're going to actually write in some R code all right and so we want to format our system date and uh, how are we wanting to format this we want to have uh, the full month we want to have the day and then we want to have the full year um, and well you guys can look this up this type of formatting it would be something like um, like this it would be something like October uh, 31st 2020 okay so you can you can see that this is this is what this format should look like and so whenever this prints out a header, it should say something like updated, um, and then it'll have the actual date here for us. Whoops. Okay, so let's give this a try. Oh, let me delete that before it causes an error for us. And let's, let's knit this together. Okay, and so now we see here when it, once it knitted together, we have our test report, which is our title. We have updated, and again, notice here, it's October 30th, 2020. So it's gonna grab today's date. So then if tomorrow I updated this file again, it would say October 31, 2020. Um, now, notice here, it's fuel economy for SUVs. So this was automatically filled in. And then here, it's grabbing whatever our class is. And notice here, it's going to show our displacement and our highway. Okay, and so then if we ever go through and we change, uh, uh, we change this to some other uh, parameter later on, it will actually help us and it will actually change it for us each time. Uh, so let's go on and add a couple more things that we'd like to do here. Um, so let's say that we want to do a list of these attributes. So let's um, so let's go over. Oops, let's go over a couple of these. And so I want to go back. Let me change my view here real quick. I want to look at the console because we're going to write this up in the console 
So let's create, let's say we want to do a bunch of reports. Okay, so we're going to create a tibble. All right, and then, whoops. Let me clear that so we have it clear again. All right, um, so we're going to create a tibble here and we want our class is going to be unique. And then we want our MPG class of data. All right, we want our file name. Okay, we'll want this to be something like a stringer. Uh, and let's do a string. We want to concat the string. Um, and we'll call this a fuel economy dash. And then we want the class. And then we want to add um, dot HTML because it will be an HTML file. And this will create another params. Uh, and this will actually, we'll use uh, per. Okay. Uh, to map our class. And then we want to open up a list. And then we want my class is equal to everything. Okay, so then if, whoops. Uh oh, I'm gonna have to do that again real quick. Okay, so this, this won't hurt uh, at least. So let's, we're going to create a class. Okay, um, we want it to be unique. Okay, uh, MPG, and then we want our class data. Uh, and then we want our file name is going to be stringer and we want to concat uh, fuel economy our class and uh, our ending for a dot HTML and then we want the params uh, we'll use per okay uh, and we will map our class for a list for my class and it's going to equal everything and so let's run that oh and I haven't instantiated the tidyverse so let's run that and so now if we if we look at reports we notice here what's actually happening is that we have a nested uh, a, a nested list inside here so then we would have a value of our compact okay so for each of the classes the fuel economy this is what, what the file name will be and then it will have a list of parameters and again this is technically a list of one uh, and then we want to be able to render and so let me open up the file section so you guys can see here um, and we will put this as reports uh, and we want to select our output oh, we want our output file sorry is going to be our file name and then our params and then we are going to use per again and we're going to uh, do a path walk and then we're going to use our markdown Uh, and we're going to render and then we want our input file uh, actually to be that original markdown file that we had before so we called this test report it's going to use this as a kind of a, a dummy file a, a, a template for us so we do test report dot rmd and if we run this this may take this may take a minute depending on your computer and if you notice while this is running it's actually creating each of these for each of our comp, uh, for each of our cars or each of the classes and so again we notice here that there are going to be some errors and that's because there's actually a, a too small of sample size for some of these um, and that's why I also asked for it to uh, suppress the warnings so let's take a look here and we can open this up in the web browser and let me bring this over here. So we can look at it. And so here we see it takes our test report. And so you may want to take this test report 
because again, it will call this for whatever your file type is. You may want to customize this as well. It'll have your update, again, to today's date. And notice here, this is for minivans, and it has the, has the um, uh, plot for minivans. And you can do this also with your statistics and everything else. Um, and so let me go and let's grab one more. Let's maybe grab our midsize open in the browser and you can also see this as well this created a nice report for us um, and again you can you can do this in a variety of ways right now we did it for the HTML but you can also do this with um, uh, uh, PDFs or Word documents or whatever else you want and you can also and in, in, in a later video we'll do this and you can actually create these dynamically using a shiny app so then uh, your boss can interactively click on what information he wants and then export the report to whatever he sees fit. So I hope you guys enjoyed this. Uh, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time. Bye.